Hello, this is Eduardo Suárez. Today we're going to look at files, in particular CVS type files. I'm going to show you how you can read data and write data into a CVS file using Carib programs. We're going to start with the work cell I have already created. If we go to the robot controller, right click and go to properties. You're going to see here that I have already installed the Carlos package R632. First thing we're going to do, we're going to go to Tools in the menu and we're going to select Options and we're going to select the Robot tab and in here where it says Virtual Robot Troubleshooting, we're going to check the Run Virtual Robot with a Lookpad address and we're going to press apply and OK. Now, if we open the Teach Pendant, we can select Menu, we can go to Setup and the Post Communication, and on TCP IP, we're going to go to Details, and you can see that we have an uh, IP address already selected for them Robo controller and this is done automatically once we have done that selection before. So in order to apply the changes, we're gonna press function and we're gonna select cycle power and say yes. And now the work cell is gonna reboot and it's gonna take the changes. So once this is done. We can just minimize the robo, the pitch pendant, and if we go back to the robot controller, the same page for properties, you're gonna see there is a new tab in here that's called network, and you're gonna see here that the IP address was assigned to the robot controller. The first thing we're gonna do, I have in here a CVS file that is empty. If we open that, you're going to see that is no data there. And what we're going to do, we're going to transfer this file to the robot controller. So we're going to open FileZilla. And if you are not familiar how to do an FTP connection to the robot controller, you can look at my previous video, Carl Programming FTP Connection. So here we have a filezilla, we're going to go to the site manager and we have in here the row selected with the IP address and the protocol I'm using is FTP file transfer protocol. If we go to advanced, I have in the server type DOS with backlash separation, separator, and what we're going to do, we're going to Press connect and it's going to make a connection to the row controller. You're going to see that by default it's showing the MD, MD device. And on the MD device, what you can do, you can see all the TPs and the carry programs that we have on the controller, but this is not what we want. So, what we're going to do, we're going to Disconnect and we're going to go back to the site manager and we're going to make a change. We're going to select the advanced tab and from here we're going to select default and on the, the default remote directory we're going to press the backslash and we're going to connect again. You're going to notice this time that when we make the FTP connection, it's going to show all the devices. And one thing that we want to do on the remote side, we want to type PIP and press enter. And now it's going to show the folder for the PIP device. What we want to do, we want to select the test file and we're going to 
Jag förtog det roba kontrollen. Han där såg det vi inte tog från design. Uh, one thing that I want to mention is that you can download the um, file to any of the devices in here. I've selected the PID that is for pipe files because the um, PIP is part of the, um, it shares the um, control memory, the controller memory. So this is going to be very efficient for reading and writing but you can use any other device and I'm going to show you that later. So we're going to go back to the, the work cell and one thing that you're going to notice if we go to the pitch pendant and we select menu, file and files. If we go to utilities and we select the set device, you're not going to see here the PIP uh, device. So this is not accessible from here. Now that we have the file in the robot controller, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to use some current programs to read and write the files. We're going to go to files here. We're going to expand this one in here, go to file, and we're going to open the CVS write CARE program. And as the name implies, this CARE program, what it's going to do is going to write data to the CVS file. The first thing you're going to notice in here is that I have a declaration for a routine. That's going to be, be the routine that clears the screen for the user screen in the, in the teach pendant. And you're going to see that I have um, include declaring here. This is going to be a um, translator directive that includes this file in here. If you want to see this file, you can go to Tools. We're going to go to the folder for the work cell. We can select Robot 1. We can select Support. And over here, we can look for this file. So we can select the file, right click, and we can open that with a notepad. And what you're going to see, if we bring up the notepad, is that this is made of uh, constant values. And what it's doing is assigning a value to each one of the variables that we have in here. And in particular, the one we're looking for is the clear window that's going to be in the constant value 128 and then home that is going to be the constant value 137 that's going to home the cursor in the window so we can close this one in here and you're going to see that instead of uh, writing the constant value in the command what i'm using is referring to the variable that we have declared in this um, file. Now, on the executed section of the program, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to call the clear screen routine. If you're not familiar with routine, you can look at my previous video, carry programming routines. And um, again, so this is what I do, it's going to clear the user screen on the teach pendant, and also it's going to force the user screen open. And then we have the instructions for the file. There are only a few um, instructions that you can use for files. And in particular, in this example, we're going to use only four, four of them. And the first instruction is going to be open file. And what this instruction is going to do is going to make an association between the data file and a variable file that is already declared on the declaration section of the program. So what we need to specify inside the parentheses is going to be the device that we're using. In this case, it's going to be PIP and then the name of the file with extension. And also we need to specify 
how we're gonna open the file and the optional being uh, read and write read only append and update in this case what we're gonna do with the file is gonna be append that means that we're gonna keep a writing the data and every time we write a data it's gonna be added to the end of the file once the file is open, we can use the instruction IO status to know if there was any issue opening the file. What this uh, IO status is going to do is going to return an integer value that we're going to put in this variable status that is also already declared as a, in the variable section. And then we can look at the status. Is the status different from zero? That means that there was a um, problem opening the file and we can write that information on the user screen. So once the file is open, the next thing we're going to do is gonna, uh, we're going to write data to the file. And for that, we use the write instruction. And after the write instruction, we need to say the um, file variable that we're using and we just write in the data and for this example we're going to write three uh, data it's going to be three strings test one test two and test three and again once uh, we write to the file we can use again the alio status to find out if there was any issue writing to the file so if the status is equal to zero, that means that was no, um, there was no error. And then we're going to use the, uh, again, the instruction write. And this time we're going to write to the user screen to indicate that the uh, file is finished. And finally, what we need to do, we need to close the file. And what this is going to do is going to terminate the association that we have uh, established at the beginning between the data file and the variable file. As you can see, the um, executed section of the program is very simple. Basically, we have only three instructions. Open file, write to file, and close file. One more thing that you can not notice in here that I'm using the write instruction in two different uh, cases. One case, we use the write instruction to write data to the file. And in that case, we need to identify the variable file that we're going to write to. And the other case is when we write to the user screen and in that case we use the instruction write and after that we use a tp display so the next thing we're gonna do we're gonna save the file and we're gonna build it and we're gonna run it we're gonna open the teach pendant we're gonna split the screens and we're going to go to select. We're going to select the carry program. And we're going to press enter to select it. And we're going to run it. And you see that this is already done. So now, if we want to see the file, what we can do the file sealer we can test the we can take the file and transfer it back to the computer and now we can open the file from here and you're gonna see that we have the data already there on the first line so now if we go back to the teach pendant and we run the program again is forward you're going to see that the we have a new data on the file 
we can take the file again, transfer to the laptop, and if we open the file, because we use the instruction pen, so we're going to see that we have uh, more data at the end of the end of file. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to delete this line. I'm going to save the file, and I'm going to put it back on the RoboControl. So now that we know how to write data to a file, we're going to look at how to read data from the file. Here I have another carry program. We're going to open the file. And we're going to do exactly the same on the executive section of the program. We're going to call the clear screen routine. Then I'm going to initialize a counter. We're not going to use that for now. And I'm going to open the file with the file variable. Notice at the time I'm using the read only instruction instead of a pen because I don't want to make any changes to the file. Then we're going to use the read instruction. And the read instruction is going to use the file variable and it's going to return a, a string when it reads the data from the file. In this case, I'm going to use a string, I'm going to call the variable current line, and I have declared the variable on the declaration section of the program, and I made it big enough to fold uh, 40 characters. You have to make sure that this line is going to be, the string is going to be big enough to hold um, whatever you read from the line. The read instruction is going to read one line at a time. That's why we need to use a repeat until loop to read all the data from the file. And the loop is going to finish when we reach the end of the file. Again, we're going to use the IU status to know, um, to get the status of the read instruction. And if the status is equal to zero, that means that there was no error. The, if the status is equal to 2021, that means that we reach the end of the file. And if we, if the status is different from any of these two numbers, it means that we got an error. Uh, so if the status is different from zero, we're going to mark the flag in a file as a true. And in that case, we can finish the, the loop. And then the last thing we're going to do, we're going to close the file with the close file instruction. Notice again something similar to the write instruction. When we use the read instruction, we can read data from the file if we use the file variable, or we can uh, read data from the user screen if we use the read TP display. So now we're going to save the file, we're going to build it, and we're going to run it. We're going to open the teach pendant. We're going to select the carry program. And we're going to execute the program. You can see here that we the program was executed successfully. And what we're showing in here is the current line that we read from the data file. And finally, we're going to show that we end the, we reach the end of the file. So this one is going to finish the reading the executing the file. You can notice something here. We're reading the data from the line all together with no separation, and that might not be very useful for us. So the next thing we need to do is pass the data. We're going to pop back to select. We're going to select another file. 
and we're going to minimize the this pendant we're going to go back to the carry program we're going to select this line we're going to delete it and we're going to replace it with this fold so what i'm going to do in here i'm going to declare a counter and I'm going to initialize the, the counter with one and then I'm going to do a repeat until loop again and I'm going to be looking the loop until the delimiter position is equal to zero we want to define a delimiter that we know that the delimiter is going to be a comma and we're going to find the position of the delimiter inside the current line for that we're going to use the index instruction that is going to look for the delimiter inside the string current line once we find the position of the delimiter we're going to save it to the delimiter position variable next thing we're going to do we're going to look for the delimiter position if the delimiter position is different from zero we're going to assign the data delimiter position minus one to the parsing end position variable and we're going to use this parsing end position to find the first string up to the delimiter for that, we want to use the instruction sub string that is going to take the string from the current line up to the parsing end position, and we want to assign the data to the sub string with the index that we have that is counter one. We're going to keep repeating this loop until we get to the delimiter position equal to zero when the delimiter position is equal to zero that means that there are no more commas on the current line and at that point we're gonna save the data on the substring with the counter updated using again the substring uh, instruction and then we can finish the loop so we're gonna save this one we're gonna build it and we're gonna run it we're gonna open the teach pendant we're gonna select the program and we're gonna run it and you can see here how the line was parsed First thing we are doing, we are reading all the line from the file and we're going to write it to the teach pendant on the user screen. Here we have the three strings, test one, test two, and test three. We're going to find the position of the delimiter, that is position six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six is the position where we have the comma. Then we're going to take on the substring with an index number one. We're going to take the first string up to the delimiter. And then we're going to overwrite the current line with the previous current line, taking away the first string. So the next current line that we're going to have is going to be test two and test three and again the we're going to repeat the loop again we're going to find that the position of the delimiter is six and then we go back in here and we take on the substring number two uh, the next string that is going to be test two and then we are left with no more um, the limiters, so the position of the limiter is going to be zero and a substring with index number three is going to take the test number three string 
So what we can do, we can go to data, we can select the cattle variables, and here we're going to have the substrings. I declare the substring as a array of four. In this case, we're using only three. But we can go inside this and go to details, and you're going to see that the substrings number one is this one, substring number two is test two, and substring number three is test three. In this case, substring number four is an is initialized because it hasn't been used. And that's how we can parse the initial data that we have on the substrings. One more thing I want to do, I want to show you that it's also possible to read and write a file from an FTP connection. We want to open the teach pendant. We want to back to select. We want to select another program. We want to go to menu and set up and go to cross communication. On the setup protocol screen, we want to select FTP and we're going to select show and we're going to select client. Over here, we have the client connection number one. We're going to go to detail and we have already the, the protocol and FTP. If you don't have this one, you can select choice and select FTP from there. We're going to go to server IP hostname. We're going to press enter and we're going to type 127.0.03. In this case, I'm using the same IP address that we have already for the robot. So the FTP connection is going to be inside the robot. Over here on the remote path, we're going to select the from device. We're going to put backlash fr and press enter. So now we can go back to the previous screen and we have this one in here. The next thing we need to do, we're going to select action and we're going to press select define. We could go back to action and select star, but we don't need to do that because the um, star is going to be executed the moment that we execute the instruction for the open file. So now the next thing we're going to do, we're going to go back to the FTP connection. We're going to select the file and we're going to delete it from here. We're going to select the FROM device and we're going to copy the file to the FROM device. We're going to go back to the work cell. We're going to open the program and in this case we need to change when we open the file, instead of the PIP, we're going to use C1 for the FTP client connection one. We're going to save it, we're going to build it, and we're going to run it again. We're going to select the current program, and we're going to execute the program, and you can see that the program executes exactly the same. In this case, we are reading the file from the FTP connection that we have on client one to the FROM drive. So now, if we go back to the menu, set up, and host communication, if we select FTP client, the client has been started because was started the moment that we opened the file. 
So now if you want to use the um, file that is in the computer in Windows, the principle will be exactly the same. I cannot show you here because I, I don't have an IP address for the computer and I haven't even tried on the real robot controller but I assume that if you change the IP address and you make a reference to the C drive on the computer you should be able to do that. If you already know that this one works and you know how to do that you can put in the comments below. And with this I conclude the presentation for this video. I'm going to leave the link to the work cell on the description below. I hope you find this information useful and in the future I'm going to make another video with a real application using a CVS file.